This is my bed lamp. I just need to pull this and let there be light. Good morning students, I'm Mr. Boscherini and for our unit on magnetism and electricity, today we're going to study electric circuits. During this lesson, we're going to see how we can describe and draw circuit diagrams. I'm going to explain what is meant with the word current and we will explain how some materials allow or does not allow electric current to flow. In order to understand how electricity works, we need to build an electric circuit. And what you see here on my table are the components or the elements of the simplest possible electric circuit. Starting from the most important one, which is our power unit, which in this case will act as a battery, so something that provides electric energy. In our case, this electric energy comes from the main, so from a socket in the wall. A battery uses chemical energy, then it's transformed into electric energy, but for our purpose, it's exactly the same thing. Then we have a switch, and then we have a light bulb or lamp. And now we need to connect these three components together by using wires. Um, a, a quick note on color coding, as you can see, I have black and red wire, wires makes no difference, okay? Uh, the color coding is useful when you have a complex circuit to build and you want to, don't want to get confused, but they work exactly the same way. They're perfectly interchangeable. So let's start building our circuit. I will connect this end. I'm using these two ends for um, our power unit. These are what we call direct current, which is the kind of electricity provided by a battery. The yellow ones are related to alternate current, which we're not going to use this time. I'm going to connect to one end of our switch, then the other end of the switch to one end of a bulb, one end of a bulb back to our battery. And right now, I made what I call a closed loop, which is an electric circuit. So let's see if our setup works. So I'll set the dial back to minimum. I'll hit the switch. Nothing is happening, but right now, this dial is pretty low. So let's, let's increase it. But still, nothing is happening. Of course, I forgot that I need to press the switch. When I press the switch, this circuit is closed. A closed circuit is what you want. A closed circuit is a circuit that works. An open circuit is a circuit where electricity cannot pass. So let's look at our circuit. As you can see here, I have a picture exactly the same circuit. Uh, let's see how we can label it. So we'll start again from our a power unit, but I told you for our purposes, this is a battery. So let's call this battery. Then we have our switch over here. And down here, we have our light bulb, or just bulb or lamp. Okay, but I'll call it bulb. And then, of course, in order to connect all the components together, we need cables, or as I prefer to call them, wires, also called leads. Okay? So this is how we can represent and label, using a picture, our electric circuit. Using pictures, though, it's not a very effective way of representing circuits, especially when you start adding more and more components, and then you have tons of wires connecting different components. It can become extremely confusing, and if you see that picture, you might not realize what's going on there. So this is why, when we want to represent electric circuit, we use instead diagrams. And instead of pictures of the single components, we use symbols. If you look over the internet for circuit symbols, you see so many different charts, some simple, some complex, some with different symbols, etc. What you see here is just a sample, and for 
our purpose i don't want you to memorize all of them but i want just you to identify those which are related to the circuit that we just built starting with our battery and probably you already saw that this is a symbol by the way you might notice also that the symbol for battery and the symbol for cell are very similar there is a small yet significant difference between battery and cell for, for again for our purposes we can use these two symbols in an interchangeable way so anyway let's so let's circle the symbol for battery then uh i think you recognize the symbol for light bulb or lamp which is this one up here on the top right corner and finally the switch as you can see here we have both the open switch and the closed switch which is this sort of drawbridge but uh, normally we use the open switch symbol okay so now we're ready to represent the same circuit but using symbols when you draw a circuit using symbols, one of the most important conventions is that the cables that you're using to connect the different components are represented with straight lines. But not straight lines going in any random direction, but straight lines which should be either horizontal or vertical. So let's start by drawing first our battery. So I will draw a long line, a gap, a short line, and then dot 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 meaning they have you have more of those and then again a long line like this and a short line with a gap and these are the two connecting ends of our battery let's move now to the light bulb i will and, and again there's nothing sacred here you can you can put them like side by side all three components it just close the circuit like this but just to keep everything compact um i will draw the light bulb down here so i'll make a circle more or less with a cross in between and then the two connecting ends and here on the left i would connect directly it's really important you try not to leave gaps. Remember, gaps means open circuit, means a circuit that will not let electricity flow. And here, I need to add my uh, switch, which I will represent with an open drawbridge, so like this. And now, and let's make this a little bit bigger, okay? And there you have it. This is our very first circuit represented as a diagram. In our previous unit about uh, exploring contact and non-contact forces, we focused a lot on magnetic and non-magnetic material and how we can tell one from the other, which was pretty simple. No, you just needed a magnet, you need your material, and if a magnet was attracting material, it was a magnetic material. If not, it was non-magnetic. Now, it's important you understand this is a pretty much black and white kind of definition. Things are a little bit more complex, but let's stick to that. In the case of electric circuits, the two main uh, uh, the main division of materials is between conductors and insulators. And again, I'm using a very strict black and white kind of division into conductors and insulators. And let's stick to this definition for now. So conductors are materials that allow the passage of electricity. Examples are most metals and graphite. Insulators, on the other hand, are materials that do not allow the passive electricity. An example, not surprising, are glass, plastic, wood, or rubber. But why it was very, very easy to tell if a material was magnetic or not? How we can tell if a material is a conductor or an insulator? What kind of test can we devise to see if a material allows the passive electricity and probably a few of you already have figured it out but let's see it together let's make this test not surprisingly for testing for conductors and insulators i'm using a setup very similar to our previous circuit so we have again our battery we have a light bulb which will tell us if there is a passage of electricity but as you can notice i've taken away this switch and i've replaced it with these two cables that are ending with crocodile clips and you have to be very careful not pinching your fingers just to test if our setup is still working 
I will turn on the battery and just let these two ends touch. Yes, it's working. Now, by the way, it's very important. Every time you make a modification in your circuit, you turn off your battery. This will prevent electric shocks, damage to the equipment, but most importantly, damage to yourself. And we'll start with this material. This is a piece of copper. So I will connect it to, on one side to the crocodile clip, then to the other one. It's important the two crocodile clips do not touch each other. Let's turn on. And this shows us that copper is a conductor. Turn off the battery, take away a piece of copper, and now I have a piece of rubber. And as you can imagine, rubber is an insulator. Just to finish this very, very quick test, and you can repeat this with as many materials as you want, I want to use this one. This is a pencil. As you can notice, it has been sharpened on both ends. Right now, I will start by connecting the external part of a, of a pencil, where, which is made of wood, okay? And let's see what happens. Now, surprisingly, nothing happens. Wood is a conductor. But let's see what happens now if I connect the tips. The tips are made of um, an allotrope of carbon, a type of carbon. It's called graphite. And let's see what's so special about graphite. Graphite is not a metal, by the way. Graphite is a conductor. The material which is inside every pencil is a conductor. In the next lesson, I'm going to introduce you the physical quantities which are related to electric circuits, the flow of electricity, most importantly, electric current and potential difference, also known as voltage. But for today, that's all from Mr. Buscarini.